Today we'll learn how to implement Coyote Time in Godot. Let's start by setting up a simple platformer scene with a character. If you're scratching your head on how to get this done, just let me know in the comments. If enough folks are interested, I'll put together a nifty video guide specifically on crafting a basic character controller for platformers. Now, onto the star of the show, Coyote Time. First, let's set up some variables. We need two variables, one to keep track of how much time has passed since the character left the ground, and another to define how long coyote time lasts. In the physics process function, we need to check if the character is on the floor. If they're not, we'll increment the timer. Now, for the magic part. When the player presses the jump button, we'll check if coyote timer is less than coyote time. If the condition is met, the character will jump. And there you have it. The character can now jump for a short period after leaving a platform. You might have noticed that your character can jump as many times as they want during coyote time. Not exactly what we're going for. This happens because we don't have anything in our code that prevents the character from jumping more than once while they are in coyote time. We need to add a restriction. To fix this issue, we'll add a Boolean variable called has jumped to track whether the character has already jumped during coyote time. Now, let's update our jumping logic. We'll only allow the character to jump if they haven't jumped yet. When the character jumps, we'll set his jump to true. Finally, we need to reset the has jumped variable when the character is back on the floor so they can jump again the next time they are in coyote time. And there we have it. Now your character can only jump once during coyote time, which makes the mechanic work as intended. As a bonus, let's quickly go over how you can implement a double jump along with coyote time. To keep track of whether the player has already performed a double jump, we introduce a new variable called has double jumped initially set to false. We need to modify the jumping logic in the physics process function. This line ensures that if the player is within the coyote time window and hasn't already jumped, they can perform the initial jump. Next, we have an else if clause that checks if the double jump has not been performed yet. If the player has already made the initial jump and hasn't double jumped, this condition will be true. Inside this block, we set the vertical velocity to jump force again. You may choose to adjust the value here if you want the double jump to have a different height compared to the initial jump. We set his double jump to true, indicating that the double jump has been used. Lastly, reset the has jumped variable to false if the player is on the floor. This setup ensures that the player can perform a double jump after the initial jump whether they are within the coyote time window or not. And that's it for implementing double jump along with coyote time. This combination allows for more flexible and responsive character control in platformer games. To recap, we've learned how to implement coyote time in Godot, how to add a double jump mechanic, and how to fix the infinite jumping issue during coyote time. Experiment with these mechanics to make your platformer feel smooth and responsive. That's it for today's tutorial. If you have any questions or want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And happy game developing!